Take out your Hebrew prayers, please, for Tuesday. for Tuesday. Adonai imachem mitpalala yihyu l'ratzon imreifi v'hegyon libi l'fanecha Adonai tzuri v'goali Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Is that an amen or a yawn? Yeah. Um, <laughs> look at the first line, please. Look at the third word, please. Actually, the third and fourth word of the first line. See where I am? Imre fi. Pretty see where I am? Anybody out there? See where I am? Okay. Um, that is the phrase, words of my mouth. Words of my mouth. So you notice in Hebrew, or in English, we have to use three words. Words of, actually four words, my mouth. Four words, right? Hebrew, it's two words. Um, and that seri yod ending there is creating that relationship uh, of possession, words of my mouth. The, pro, the possessive pronoun is coming from the e, the chirik yod ending on fi. So we haven't, we haven't learned that yet. Um, so that's what we're talking about today is how um, nouns can be joined together in this genitival relationship, this of relationship, which actually often it's possession, but it can be more than that. Um, the of is the word we use in English most of the time. Um, so that, uh, it's called the construct phrase. That's what we're going to be looking at today. We have one in our prayer this morning. Tyler was saying, I am so ready for the quiz today. Don't panic. I said to him, you're actually ready for the exam uh, we're having, not the quiz. So that, that's good. Um, we are still having the exam in here. But uh, think of your quizzes as your study guides. So I'm going to draw from those quizzes um, and <clears throat> to go back and review those, those things that I ask you on the quizzes. That's what we're going to I want to ask you all those things, but some of those things, and then review your vocabulary because... All the vocabulary we've learned so far is fair game for this exam. Dante? So that was going to be my question. The vocabulary all the way up to chapter 13. Um, through this. Um, yeah, today. Um, today is 13. We're doing 12 and 13 today. Okay. Yeah, so everything up to, as it says in the syllabus, everything up to um, the, up to the midterm. Okay, so we're uh, there's no quiz. We would have had quiz a quiz today covering vocabulary, but I thought you wouldn't prefer not to have a quiz right before the exam. So you can just be focusing on the exam, but we still need to do that vocabulary. So don't yeah don't miss that um, today. The reason I put these together is because they're really. The same subject. They were just split between two chapters, so it's going to make most sense to do them together. But that means I don't think it's a, a lot more grammar, but it is more vocabulary. It's twenty words rather than ten. Tyler, I heard you explain to Costco. Costco, the one quiz that you put up on the board. Yeah. You don't have like a copy of. I think I put two on the board, didn't I? Yeah. I'm just wondering if the one you get on the board is like we could get copy for practice, or you just be filling them out? Um, yeah, that would be a good idea. So I, I sent him, because he asked, he asked me, 
I sent him the three I have. Okay. Perfect. The two I put on the board, I made a P and I gave to Jonathan DeGrade, and I don't have it anymore. Okay. So, um, but I bet somebody else has it. Uh, if you don't have it, I think he might have misplaced something, or somebody might have okay. misplaced something. But if you misplace something, that's okay. But if you want to make sure what was on that, but I think probably if you look at the chapter, you'll see. Oh yeah, I remember. Right. You know, that's another way to, to study is like, what is the what are the big ideas of this chapter? Because that's what I want to ask you. Not the smaller points, but the bigger points. Um, so. Um, I could put up the ones that I have files. Yeah, that'd, up be, that'd be great. Under, I'll just make a quiz folder and just put them under files. Okay. I'm sorry that the two that I hand wrote, I don't. I went back and looked and I don't. Um, I don't have those keys because yeah, they were handwritten and I gave them to Jonathan to use. So, um, okay. Um, also, uh, I think that um, maybe I'll do the I'll do the tutoring on Wednesday How about that and we can that can be a review session because I'm not sure because we do have some material some grammar to do today but so uh, he's been doing it at 11 is that right so I know I know not all of you have been going to that but I want to invite everybody Invite everybody, um, and we can Mevo it too, for you people out there. Um, <laughs> we're not forgetting you, um, but I think on Wednesday I want to have a review session. So start to work on things, start to review, and you notice, okay, I'm not getting this. I don't remember how does this work. Bring that on Wednesday, and I'm happy to take any questions and review. Up. And um, I think we can use this room too because there's not a class in here. How does that sound? Okay. Did you have a follow-up? Yeah, I was just wondering if it was going to be in here. So. Yeah. Let's do it in here at the normal tutoring time, which I believe is at 11. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know what time student college is? Uh, it's at the breakfast, I think. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tomorrow's one. I'm sorry. I'm saying Wednesday, but it's, it's tomorrow. Yeah. Just so you know. I just want to make sure we don't have Just so you know. Well, we also have boards in this class tomorrow, too. No, no, we don't. No. No, no. Not, not this week. Actually, he might be right. I think it was two week, two Wednesdays in a row, wasn't it? Yeah, but that was this last Wednesday and the Wednesday before that. Okay. 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 Ok
this is a good place to start, I think, here. So what's the ending of, uh, that we're going to use on the masculine singular of our noun, Seuss? Okay, good. You're getting wise. I can't trick you like I used to be able to trick you. There's no ending. So um, how about how about feminine singular? Right here. Susa. Susa. What, Susa. What's the vowel and consonant? Common say. Okay. Masculine plural. <laughs> Who can do that? Raise your hand. Who can do it? Tyler? Susim. Susim. Very good. Perfect. Then. Okay. Somebody else. Feminine plural. Gregory. Suso. Very good. Suso. Can you can you tell me the name of the vowel and consonant? That's the uh, Zurich vav, vav or something like that. Uh, cholum vav. Cholum vav. Yeah. And then tab. So this, the, the dot that's up high is the cholum, cholum, vav, tab. Very good. Okay, suso. So, um, we were recently looking at the adjectives, all right? And we, we saw from the adjectives that we had these three different uses of the adjective, and the attributive adjective follows the noun it modifies in Hebrew. I think I mentioned to you, actually, there aren't that many adjectives in Hebrew. Um, and compared to English, there aren't that many. So the way Hebrew compensates for the lack of adjectives is that it uses nouns as adjectives or to modify other nouns, the way we would tend to use adjectives or, or add a lot of adjectives. So um, and that's called the construct state. That's the construction that we are going to look at today, the construct state. Um, so let me give you an example. So we could say um, the holy mountain. Okay? So holy, there is an adjective that is modifying mountain. But in Hebrew, they would say the mountain of holiness. So there's no adjective there. You see? Two nouns, and they're joined with this genitive of, uh, the mountain of holiness. And so there are different ways to construe that of, but one way is at, as an attribute. Okay, so Hebrew does a lot of that, joining two nouns together. And this construction is the way to do that, to join two nouns together into a phrase. And there are more, as I said, there are more relationships that can obtain between these two nouns, but... A common one is really in place of an adjective. All right, so um, in the paradigm for the construct state, oh, let's go back up a, sec a second. Um, I've mentioned this word before, before to you, but it probably didn't stick because we hadn't covered it. But that a noun in its most basic form, its independent form on its own is called the absolute state. It's absolute, meaning it's just standing on its own. It's absolute in itself. It's, and then there is another state called the construct state when it's closely joined with other nouns, and other noun or other nouns. In this, in what we often translate in English as an of construction or genitive construction. So, um, Mountain, uh, or mountain of holiness, mountain of. So that's those are English examples. So now we're going to look at what 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 we've been learning so far. All these vocabulary items are, have been in the absolute state. They're just on their state in the state on their own by themselves. Now we're going to start to look at what is the construct state. Okay, so that's important to get that that dualism there of the two states. Okay? These are all absolute. They're all standing on their own. They're not in construct state. Um, so the masculine singular is going to look exactly the same. There's no special ending. And in the case of sus, it is a very stable word. Why? Because it has this long vowel, or super long vowel here, the shurik, which never changes. Um, but 
other nouns are going to have vowel changes in the masculine singular that will indicate the construct state. Not an ending, but a vowel change. But not in the case of Sue. So right now, this is just showing us that there's no, there's no ending in the absolute and there's no ending in the construct. Okay? So first of all, we, we're going to do this paradigm, then we'll start to look at some examples of how you create a construct state relationship. All right? So, susa, comma, te, in the absolute, but in the construct, susat. Remember, before I told you that the tab is a secondary feminine ending. And here we see it. So it's linking up with that knowledge that we have about the secondary feminine ending, that this ending, at, patata, sus at, um, is the construct ending. Okay? So, um, So in this side of the paradigm, there's only one difference from the absolute. It's in the feminine singular. And on this side, there's only going to be one difference in the masculine plural. Okay, so susim in the absolute, sus a in the construct. Uh, you can think about it. It still has that yo, but it doesn't have the mem. Anymore, but it has a different vowel than tsere yod. Um, and those two um, sounds go together. A, that's how you say that. You don't say a, a, <laughs> just a, tsere yod, okay? So these, and then the feminine plural is the same, susot. So if you take the absolute noun paradigm, you only make two changes to it in the feminine singular and in the masculine plural. The endings are different. At instead of a, a instead of im. Okay? Two modifications to the absolute paradigm of the noun endings or the constructs. So what Futaro does is he takes this paradigm. And he splits it in half into two chapters. But I want to put them together so we see the relationships. And we see, as we have the paradigm for the absolute forms of the nouns, we have this paradigm for um, the construct forms of the nouns. So big question, the big question that we just had was, what about the midterm? You should learn these two forms. You should learn these two modifications to the paradigm you already know for the construct. So that's the big idea for today, okay? And we'll go into a few more things about how construct phrases are formed. Now, any questions about this? The paradigm. We're gonna, I'm sure you have questions probably about construct state and relationship with words. So how, how do the vowels change in the construct state if it's not that super long vowel? Is there a... Method? According to the same rules that we learn when we learn vowel changes, but basically what's going to happen, it's hard to do it, to, I'm going to illustrate it over here, I'll, and I'll show you some examples of vowel changes. Okay. It's nice to start with sus because it's stable. Okay, but basically what you're going to create in a construct state um, relationship is a single accentual unit. So remember that in a normal accentual unit, we're talking about the word, and the accent goes on the last syllable in most cases in Hebrew. So that same principle applies, but now it's over multiple words. So it's as if the accent goes to the last word. And this is going to be the first word um, in, a, in a construct phrase of two words. So the vowels are going to change as if it were these distant syllables from the accent. Okay, we'll look at some examples. It's much easier to see it there. So the, right now the big idea is that um, in Seuss, it's regular, so that's that's helpful. But there there will be some changes in the masculine singular that could indicate it as the construct rather than the absolute. 
All right? Yeah. Okay? Let's, re let's say this paradigm. Repeat after me. Sus. Sus. Susat. Susat. Susay. Susay. Susop. Susop. So this would be translated horse of, mare of, horses of, mares of. Okay? That's how we do it in English. The, the default translation for the construct relationship in English is just to use of because of is, we use it in a very similar way, that word. It has a, a very similar um, set of different uses, a genitive relationship. Uh, if you remember, remember back to Greek, the genitive, okay? That's, that's what we're talking about here, that sort of a relationship. All right? You follow that? Okay, so let's create um, a construct relationship. And um, um, let's say the, the horse of the king. Okay, and we have Melech, okay, what am I going to do to Melech to make it definite? Okay, hey, what's the vowel? Patak, what else? What's that? Strong diet in the name. Good. Okay, three things. Remember, in a regular uh, situation, hey, patach, strong dagesh, ha melech. Okay, the king. Now, um, in 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 Hebrew, when we we form the construct simply by juxtaposing these two nouns. We we form it by simply juxtaposing them. Okay, so, and in this case, as I said, sus has a long vowel, it's stable, so it's just sus, but then we put another noun right after it, hamelech, okay, and the, the definiteness of the construct phrase is determined by the last word. Usually it's going to be two words, but you can make a construct chain of a, of a you can have a whole chain of nouns. Um, and the definiteness of the construct phrase, the whole chain, is determined by the last word in the chain. So on its own, sus is indefinite. A horse, right? When it has no article in Hebrew, it's indefinite. Um, and it would, we would look at this and we'd say, oh, a horse, the king. But because it's in construct, the definiteness of the entire chain is determined by the definiteness of the last member in the chain. Okay, in this case, the second word. So this is translated, and it, uh, the definiteness is found here. This is translated, the horse of, that's the construct gen, translation we use in English, the king. Okay, see how both are definite. Uh, and if, if, we, if we extended it, um, we could say, Sus melech hammachut the horse of the king of the kingdom. Every, every single word is definite in the whole uh, chain. But only the last one is marked as definite with the definite article. Okay, questions about that?
Whoa, someone's revving up there. <laughs> um, so it's like it's like this is this is what I was saying just a minute ago. It's as if this is all one word in Hebrew, and and the accent is going to be over here on this word uh, rather than rather than here. It's that same principle of accent going to the end in Hebrew, but in this case, it's going between words. Ian. So it's, I thought Sue said um, last time, singular, uh -huh. were to be um, absolute rather than a, a construct. We would use the indefinite, right? A horse of the king. So, good question. You can't use the construct to convey a mixed... Um, group of definiteness. Okay. So you can't say in this. You can't use. You can say it in Hebrew, right? Because you have to be able to. You have to be able to to say it. But um, you just don't use the construct state to express that. The construct state is always definite. Everything in the chain is definite. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'm just trying to understand how if I saw the masculine singular, I would know it's in a construct state because it also looks like an absolute. Um, Is that making any sense? I don't know if I'm making any sense, but... Well, in this case... Yeah, in this, in this case, there's nothing about this word that tells us it's construct in itself. It's the relationship to this word that tells us it's in construct. Uh, in a construct relationship. So we say it's in construct. Um, it's the context. So um, if you have two nouns right next to each other and they're not f fulfilling another function in the sentence, then this, you know, your best bet is that it, they're a construct. Okay. But, in, you know, let me give you another example. So, um, and it could be, the in, it can be indefinite. Too. So, um, so I could just say this: Susmela. By juxtaposing them, I am putting them in construct. And this is a horse of a king. So you, it could be all definite or all indefinite and it's this word that always determines it because you don't ever put any articles on the words that precede the last word it's always the last word that determines so the indefiniteness of this melech is what tells us this entire construct uh phrase is indefinite so this is this is i would ch change this to a horse of a king okay so Um, so let me say that again. The last word in the phrase, or it could be a chain, it could be multiple words, determines the definiteness of the whole. If it's indefinite, the whole is indefinite, like this, a horse of a king. If it's definite, the whole chain is definite, the horse of the king. And you raised the very good question, well, what if one is indefinite and one is definite? What if it's because the king has many horses, what if it's a king, or a, a horse of the king? Um, then you would have to use a different construction. You can still say that in Hebrew, you just don't use the construct to say that, to say that when it's mixed. So it probably would, we'd do it like this. What did I add to it? What did I do? Yeah. In Hebrew, two, that lamed, is often used for possession. Which kind of, it's similar because we say belonging to. We don't say just two. We don't say um, the book to me or something like that. You know, 
we say the book belonging to me, belonging to, but because we have that belonging to, we can make a connection with this to. So, yeah, so this is definite because we see this patach, strong dagesh here, right? Because remember, the preposition, when it's going to be attached to a definite noun, slides over the hay, and we keep the vowel in the strong dagesh that tell us it's definite. So here we have, it's not in construct now because we have this preposition in between. In a construct chain, you can't have anything that comes in between. If it does, it breaks that up, okay? So, so here we have an indefinite noun, sus, ha, a, a, a horse, la melech, to the king. And this would be translated, a horse belonging to the king. Okay? Uh, one is indefinite, one is definite. You can create mixed phrases, but then you don't use the construct to do it. Any other, any other questions? Yeah. The king is definite because the lamed makes it be definite. Not the lamed. The lamed is the preposition. Why is king definite in that sentence? Because it has this patak strong dagesh, which oh, are okay. of the definite article. Right. And if it was indefinite, it would be lamelech with a shva. Okay. Right? Yeah. Remember it now? So that you always you add the article first. So if I took melech and I said, Hamelech, hey patach strong dagesh. Then I slide the preposition over the hey, and I get lan melech to the king. Come back to you. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Everybody following those main ideas about the, the construct. It's all indefinite or all indefinite, and the definiteness is determined by the last word. In the phrase, okay? Um, so let's add something here. Um, Devarim. What does Devarim mean? Words. 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 Okay. Okay. This is in the absolute, masculine and plural. Words. Words. In the absolute state. Okay. Now, if I want to say the words of the king, I'm I'm going to take it and I'm going to change it with that ending, the a ending. So it's going to be. Um, So let's take these vowels okay I added that ending on there but now we have we have syllables that are susceptible to change all right and so this is now the accent is over here because this is a, a single accentual unit so let's put a mock up there to remind us of that fact not required but we'll put it there all right so, whereas this would normally be the accent, it's not there anymore, it's over here. So, so now we put our rules, our rules to work that we, had, we have learned. So, this is, think of those as references that you can go back to, but I want to show you how it, how it works and how vowel changes can happen here, okay? So, this is a stable vowel. It's open, but it's stable because this is a, a long uh, vowel with a, with a helping letter. Yo, okay, so that's stable. This is a propritonic, open, so it's stable, or I'm sorry, it's not stable. It can reduce, right? Propritonic syllables reduce. So I'm going to reduce that to a schwa. And then we have our situation with two schwas together, which we've seen. Remember when you add on the preposition? 
with a schwa to the beginning of a word that has a schwa, what do you do to resolve the two schwas together? Because you can't have it. Get rid of the bottom. bottom of the yeah, it's real. It's, you just get rid of that. And then you have a... Uh, so we've seen those. We saw both of those principles before, but this is in a new context. Now we have a closed syllable here. Divre. Oh, forgot to add the definite article. All right, let's just do it indefinite. Divre melech. Words of a king. I'll just leave it like that. Okay. So this is the this is the construct. And you, I've told you this before. There's certain things you have to hold on to, cling to more tightly, and other things hold more loosely. So we're gonna know to hold on to our vowels somewhat loosely. Don't let it throw you off. Look for the consonants of the words you know, and look for the endings of the words that we're learning in the paradigm. So here we know. Dalit be reish, okay, davar, word, okay, and we see this masculine plural ending in the construct from our paradigm that we know. So we know that this is a masculine plural construct form, okay, and we're not getting too hung up about if some vowel changes happen because we know that can happen. Even if you can't produce them, you can know that that. So this is the form and how it's produced. So divrei melech, words of a king. Okay, if I want to make it definite, it would be divrei hamelech, the words of the king. Everything becomes definite then. Ignacio? How do you know, um, just at first glance, which one is the uh, tonic, pre-tonic, and uh, proprotonic in, in this case? Um. Um, because every... Um, yeah. In this case, you assume that the accent is on this word, hmm. and um, and then you, um, they're basically all going to fall into the proprietonic, as if they're going to be reducing. But you start the vowel changes from this end and go this way. <clears throat> so that, you notice how I did that. I said, okay, this one's stable. This one reduces first, then that affects this one. That's how you. That's how you. It works out. So yeah, it's we're just moving our rules. Um, we're expanding them to to say this can happen between words, rather than within a word, which we've already seen. Okay, so. Um, that's one example. Another one, let's do Hamela. Okay, we're going to say the word of the king. So um, the absolute form is Davar with two commences, Davar. Okay, so I'm going to try to add that. Okay. Oh, weak doggish in there. Okay. So, accents over here. So, this is a closed syllable. Closed syllables are stable, remember? Right? You can think of them as they're closed in, they're strong. They have that. Um, that strength of the two consonants. But it's when they're open they are vulnerable to changes. So now we have, so that's gonna stay put, but this is a proprietonic syllable, it's open, and it's gonna reduce, and it reduces down to a schwa. So then we get davar with a vocal schwa, davar ham melech. And so this is made definite by this hey here. So it's the word of the king. Following that, okay, this is just to illustrate how it can look when vowel changes take place. But you're still going to have your consonants of your noun, and you're going to have these endings that are stable for um, the construct. Okay, so how do you identify it? Well, you look for the consonants of the words you know, and you look for the endings of the paradigms you know first, and don't get too worried about some vowel changes that might take place. Um,
Okay, so let's look at um, some of the uses. Look at page 69. <clears throat> some of the uses. Um, in that box, you have the how to express the mixed form when one is definite and one is indefinite. You don't use construct. You use usually some kind of prepositional construction. Okay, but the standard relationship and meaning in English for the construct is the genitive relationship conveyed by the word of. So you can all you'll always be right to just start with the with the translation of for the relationship between the two words. Okay. <clears throat> and then uh, we, we can move on to become more precise because of can mean different things. Right? Um, and but two common uses of it, there are more, but two common uses of the genitive are of possession and of attribute or an adjectival use of it. All right. So Sus um the horse of the king, that clearly conveys possession. The king, the second item, possesses the first item. The horse of the king. Okay? So um, or Sefer HaKohen Sefer HaKohen was to be translated the <coughs> scroll of the priest the last uh, well, the last example it's under the sec uh, do you see where I am? you go down to it says construct relationship expresses possession and loose per possession, then typically that section, the last example is Sefer HaKohen. The scroll of the priest. Another example of possession. Okay, it makes sense that the priest would possess the scroll. But then you could have an example like this. Beged HaKodesh. If you have to mean Beged HaKodesh. Okay, that's that next example there in the next Next one, the construct relationship is adjectival. It's definite because the second word is definite. The garment of the holiness. Do you see where it is? The, that's literally the garment of the holiness. So does it make sense to say the garment is possessed by holiness? Not really. No, it doesn't really make sense. It makes more sense that holiness is an attribute, right? Or describing the art, the article of clothing, the garment. And so, so it, your translation would be correct, the garment of the holiness, but it would be awkward in English more than, um, you know, the scroll of the priest. We can say that in English. It's, it, it's you know... Not the smoothest way to say it, um, but in this case, we really need to to put it into an adjectival construction. So, the holy garment. So it's definite. The the whole thing is definite. We take the noun and we make it an adjective that it that it modifies the noun. Okay. What's another? What would be another way to express in English a, a smoother way to express? The scroll of the priest. Dante? The priest's scroll. The priest's scroll. Apostrophe S. Because, um, now that doesn't make sense. In this example, the garment of the holiness, the holiness's garment. Mm -hmm. Because it's not possession. But the previous example, the, we rightly identify the relationship as one of possession. Therefore, we can use the apostrophe S, which... See, of conveys the, the open genitive relationship, open to interpretation. But apostrophe S is conveying possession in English. So we can only do that when we identify that as the relationship between the two elements. Okay, those are the two most common. There are some others, but those are the two most common genitive relationships or construct uses that we have possession and the adjectival use. About that? Okay.
Um, so the last thing here is that um, this is this is the right uh, form that we should learn in our paradigm here. The ought ending as the feminine singular of the construct. But um, you can sometimes have eh, eh, which Putato calls it segolized ending, right? Because the segols, it looks like it looks like a segolate. Yeah, that is that is where it goes, right? Well, what is a segolate noun? It usually has the two features, two segols and the accent on the first syllable. See that accent when two? But this is actually an ending in this case. So he says sometimes with a feminine uh, noun, you get this ending as an alternative alternative construct ending. So let's look at the example in twelve point eight. Okay, milchama means war or battle. Okay, it's in the absolute state, milchama. But in a case like this, um, it could become... Uh, so repeat after me, milchama. Okay? It could become milchemet hayom. Repeat after me, milchemet hayom. Milchemet hayom. Okay? The, see how he has the blue chet there? He's telling you that's where the accent falls in this ending. Eh, 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 eh. So we have the top ending still up here, right? But instead of the pata, we have these two segles with this accent, a segolized ending. So that's an alternative that's a, that you might see, but it doesn't appear as often as the ot ending, the standard feminine singular construct ending. Or... Uh, mishpacha, mishpacha. Repeat after me. Mishpacha. mishpacha. That's the absolute of family. Mishpacha. Okay, but you could put it in construct. Mishpacha haav. See, see how I did the accent? I'm accenting where he has it in blue because that's where it doesn't fall in the last syllable. Mishpacha haav. Repeat after me. Mishpacha haav. Okay, that's also considered a segolized ending. But there are no segols. Why is that the case? Because of the guttural. Exactly right. So this is the, the same thing that we saw with the segolates, right? Just like the segolate nouns that have two segols and an accent on the first syllable. Um, you can have a segue noun like na'av with two patachs because of the guttural, the ayin in na'av. Here, the guttural chet is influencing these vowels. Remember, gutturals prefer A-class vowels under them and before them. So that's why it becomes mishpachat ha'av, the family of the father or the father's family. Any questions about that? Just a secondary feminine singular construct ending. Go ahead. Yeah, but it would be, the construct would be, would be Beged Kodesh HaKohen. Okay, it's HaKohen, so it's all definite. So it would be the garment of the holiness of the priest. But those genitives can be different functions. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah.
Does everybody follow that? I didn't write it on the board, but see how that works? But yeah. It wouldn't be garment holiness that the, the law made for the priest. It's saying, but these, this one is describing that that they belong to this. Um, not if they're all definite. You only have to use the preposition if there's a mixture of definite and indefinite. So, yeah, if you wanted to say, because the priest has so many vestments. Um, <laughs> a holy garment of the priest, then you would do something like that. So you, you could do Beget Kodesh La Kohen. Okay? So in, in, in this talk, could you just kind of what you talked about earlier with the priest holy garments? What oh, I just said? Yeah. Huh? So you're saying they're all definite. Everything is definite? Yes. So I can use construct for all of them? Okay. So do um, you want garments plural or just garments singular is okay? Uh yeah. Let's keep it let's keep it singular. Okay, baggage garment. Okay? Begged. Okay. The construct only operates with nouns. Now you can't have other parts of speech coming in here. You can't have prepositions and adjectives and stuff coming in here. They all have to stay. You Now we'll look at an example. I'll show you what we do with an adjective. But... For right now, we just need to know nothing can come in here and separate this. It's the immediate juxtaposition that indicates the construct relationship. Okay, nothing can get inside there. It has to stay on the outside of that chain. So, okay, Begged, Kodesh, and we're going to make it definite. Okay, so now we have three words in this chain, but they're all, these nouns are juxtaposed, they're right next to each other, okay? So to tell, and we have a feeling this is going to be a construct, okay? So, but we have to go to the last word to tell whether it's definite or not. And we see here this ha, so we see the whole thing is definite. So now we say, um, The garment of the holiness of the priest. Okay, so we have two ofs because the ofs go right here. Of, of. The garment, What? first of all, we have to look at the first one, the garment of the holiness. Okay? That is adjectival. Doesn't make sense to say possession. So, adjectival. This one is possession. Okay? So, the garment of the holiness of the priest could then be translated as the holy garment belonging to the priest, or the priest's holy garment, right? Once we get, we have this, it's called the literal translation first, where we just have all the words and the relationships out there. Then we can try to make it a more idiomatic or smoother English translation. But we want to get this out there first. Then we can work with that to get it into. So we could, we could go into the priest's holy garment. Right? In, in English, this is all definite. The definite priest, definite holy garment. Very relevant discussions for us, okay? 
Um, so now let's do it. Let's do it differently. Let's introduce an adjective. Okay, so let's say Okay, so we have a two member construct chain. Begit ha kohen. Oops, kind of hole in there. Begit ha kohen. So the last item is definite, so it's the garment of the priest. Okay, now we want to use an adjective instead of a noun, so it can't be part of this construct. But it, it can't go in between either. So it has to either be up here or up here. So what, which one is holy? Well, hopefully the priest is holy, but it could also be the depending on what we're talking about, right? So uh, who knows the adjective for holy? Kadosh. Okay, so it's going to be attributive adjective. So what do we know about attributive adjectives? They have to agree in... What's that? Number, number, case, and gender. Or number, and gender. No case in Hebrew. Right. So, whew, no, no cases. <laughs> Not to worry about that. So, gender, number, and what? Definiteness. And definiteness. Num gender, number, and definiteness. So, and it, let's, we're going to use an attributive adjective. We also know it has to follow. Okay? But, in, in, um, in this case, even if we wanted to say the holy garment, we can't put it here. It's not possible because it's being um, the construct relationship is taking priority and it's rejecting the attributive adjective to go here. So it has to go back here. So, but it's but this whole phrase is definite. The begot is definite, definite. So it has to be. Kadosh. So we have, um, because it's in construct here, so this is some construct. This is an adjective, attributive adjective, okay? So we have the garment of the priest, the holy. Now, which one is holy, the priest or the garment? It could be either one, because we, we, we're not allowed to put it here. If we could put it here, it would make it clear that it was the begot, but we can't put it here, so it has to go back here. So it's ambiguous in this case. It could be either one. It's what determines the context. What are you talking about in the context? Are you talking about the holiness of garments or priests? Okay? So now if this was um, bogade, garments, Hakohen of the priest, the garments of the priest. And we had this adjective, it could only be the priest because it wouldn't agree with the masculine plural. You see how that works? So in this case, they're both masculine and singular, so it could go with either one. But if they're different, it the adjective has to agree in gender, number, and definiteness. So that's going to tell you which one it goes with, even if it can't stand immediately following the noun because of the construct relationship. See how that goes? See how we're building on things we know about the adjective? Okay, now what if I said, what if I did this? What if I did that? What if I said, Kadosh Begit The garment of the priest is holy. All right, what do we, what kind of a use is, what, what part of speech? Part of, part of part of speech? 
adjective, yeah. okay? But now it's, what's the difference? It's preceding this construct phrase and it's not definite anymore, okay? So what did you say it was? I said it was predicative. Predicative, mm -hmm. right? Because remember, the attributive adjective must follow and agree in gender, number, and definiteness. The predicative adjective uh, may precede, often precedes, and is never definite. It's always indefinite. So now we have actually, we, we know that this is the garment of the priest, and now we can say the garment of the priest is holy. And in that in that case, it's gonna be it's gonna be this item, it's the garment that's holy. Um, because that's the main thing we're talking about. This is the, the, the main word that relates to the sentence, the first word. Because this is giving its uh, a secondary, uh, you know, modification of what's who's possessing it. So this would be translated, um, the garment of the priest is holy. Predicative adjective used with a construct relationship, construct phrase. Okay? Good, we're putting things together, that's good. Um, so, I mean, the same thing for prepositions. They can't come in in the middle here. If they do, it just it's not construct anymore. It breaks up the construct. Nothing can come in there except the definite article on the last item. Ian? Is there a way of um, rearranging these words in a, in a subsentival um, arrangement? Is there like a subsentival position? Um, you would have to introduce a verb. Okay. Because remember, subsentival is an adjective that acts like a noun. Mm -hmm. So what do nouns do? Well, they're subjects of nouns, they're direct and indirect objects of nouns. I'm sorry. What do nouns do? <laughs> they're subjects of verbs, or direct and indirect objects of verbs. Sorry, I got I, I got mixed up in the way I was saying it. Does that do you follow that? So you have to have some jobs, some noun jobs for the adjective to do. And really we don't have any noun jobs in a phrase like this. But in a larger sentence, we could. But it would it doesn't really it gets farther away from the construct. It's doing a different job in the gotcha. sentence. Uh, you know, like, like, halach kadosh. He walked a holy, <laughs> right? We could translate that a holy man walked, right? So that adjective is acting like it's actually the subject of the verb in the sentence, and it's acting, it's doing something in do which indicates that it's substantival. <clears throat> okay. Dante. Can you also say. Uh, a holy walk? Yeah, like any of say privilege, or is that like not in the first view of I mean, you could, uh, but it would have to be based upon the, a larger context. Okay. You know, so, but you're best off. You first start and you, you try to get it as literal as possible, just word by word, literal as possible, and figuring out the relationships. And that's down the that's down the road to that pilgrimage. The pilgrimage down the road to get to some something much more you know, contextual or idiomatic. You can do that, but you gotta make sure you're taking the right steps to get to arrive there rather than jumping to oh some other meaning that's does that make sense? Yeah. Far from what we're talking about here, but um, but you could see when we got down to the priest's holy garment. Mm -hmm. and that sounds it's perfect English, and but we we've actually we've accurately depicted the different relationships between those words in that. But we made sure because we took the steps in between to get there. Okay. Um, I want to make sure to go through our vocabulary. So just we'll do a couple things to, to finish up in chapter 13, and then we'll make sure and go through our vocabulary items. All right, so we just looked at um, adjectives and how they can interact with 
construct change. The main thing is they can't break into the middle. They have to stay on the outside. They could stay on the outside as an attributive adjective at the end. They could be standing on the outside as a predicative adjective that comes before it. Um, but also, we, um, I'm not going to take the time to write it on the board right now. Um, but look at 13.6. 13.6. Agreement with verbs. Okay, I just was touching on this, saying the first item in the construct chain is the main word that interacts with the sentence. But here's a, a specific example of this in terms of, in terms of verbs. So we have malach ben hamelech. Repeat after me. Malach ben hamelech. Malach ben hamelech. Okay. So we have malach. That is the verb to rule or to reign. Third person, masculine, singular, perfect of the verb. Uh, root, mem lamakav. Okay. He ruled. And then we have, in, remember, we, in Hebrew we have verb, subject, default word order. So we're, now we're looking, we have a verb, we're looking for the subject, and we have the construct phrase, ben ha -melech. Okay? It's definite because the last word is definite, ha -melech. So it's, this phrase is, the son of the king. Okay? So now, we're going to put these together. So, is the verb we're going to relate to the son or the king? It's going to relate to the son, the first element in the construct chain. So the son of the king walked, or we might, since it's possession, we could use the apostrophe yes, the king's son walked. I'm sorry, walked, reigned, malach. See how that works? It's, it's the first word that determines its function in the sentence, and the verb has to agree with the first word. It, the last word has its own function, which is to determine the definiteness of the entire thing. But it's the first word that we're actually, first of all, talking about in the sentence, and it's going to agree with the verb. So we could go on and have, and have plurals or feminines or whatever, but since it's the verb, uh, the verb is masculine and singular, the first item is going to be masculine and singular. Those two have to agree with each other, right? But if I made it plural, then the verb would have to be plural. You see how that works? And you know, we're happy to, we happen to be using masculine singular here, but you could have a variety of different genders and numbers in your construct chain, depending on what you're talking about. It's the first one that has to agree with the verb. Okay. All right. And we also have the word coal. Um, in this chapter. The reason why is because uh, this word is typically found in construct. In its absolute state, it's like it looks like this. Coal, coal. Okay? Coal. If you have to mean coal. Coal. Okay. If I put it in a construct, and I'm going to use a mock to indicate that it's in construct, it's going to look like this. Who knows how that's pronounced? Call, call, call. Ah, I gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> you have another, another shot at it? Another try? You said call, call, call right? Mm -hmm. Nope. That was a good first try, but it's not right. I, I, I gotcha. Okay? <laughs> it's, in, it's in construct. That means the accent's going over here. Mm -hmm. So what we have here is we have a closed syllable, right? Consonant, vowel, consonant, that's unaccented. A unaccented closed syllable is the natural habitat for a rare, I'm not saying endangered species, but a rare <laughs> species of the comets called comets khatu. Oh. And comets khatu is pronounced O, oh, just, like, just like the colon. So this is pronounced coal, whatever, whatever it's in construct with, all of, whatever. 
So this is actually, this is the example you should learn and memorize as the, to tell you, not only to know this word, because it appears so often. It appears all the time. All of the time in Hebrew. But uh, because it's a perfect, beautiful, common example of the Kamas Khatu. You see what I'm saying? Learn this example, know that it's cold, it's pronounced cold, and now you've learned not only this word, but also the Kamas Khatu. Okay? All of whatever it is. That's even though it has this absolute form, it almost always appears in this construct form. That's why it's included in this chapter, because it just goes in the construct instead. All of whatever. All right, let's do vocabulary. Go back to chapter 12, vocabulary. Ready to repeat after me? Chapter seven, uh, page 71, chapter 12, upper right-hand corner. Page 71. Repeat after me. Adon. Adon. Adon means Lord Master. We know Adonai, which means that I ending is my Lord or my Master. That's what it, when, that's the typical substitute for the divine name. Adonai, my Lord. That's where we get our convention of Lord in all caps from. This word being used as a substitute for the divine name. In this case, it doesn't have that suffix. It's just Adon. Do you hear that similarity? Adon, Adonai. The title, Lord. Repeat after me. Zahav. Zahav. Gold. Um, and we're going to have silver, but they didn't put them right next to each other, but it's coming up. Next word. Repeat after me. Coal. Coal. All, every, whole. But it's typically found like this. So write, you should write that in right next to it in the vocabulary list. That's how it's usually found. The small cave is just indicating that it's in construct with whatever follows it. Kamas Khatuf, pronounced coal. All, coal, every. Okay? Now silver. Accent on the first syllable. Repeat after me. Kesef. Kesef. Silver. Um, or I could just refer to money in general. But then we now we, so now we have... Zahav and Kesef, gold and silver. Okay? Repeat after me, Makom. Makom. Have I told you my mnemonic for this word? No. Uh, I say, my pocket is the, is the place I keep <laughs> Makom. <laughs> my pocket. <laughs> okay, place. It's the place. All right? Upper left hand. <laughs> uh, see, this is good material I give, give you guys. Okay. Upper left hand, uh, uh, top of the left hand column. Re it acts on the first syllable. Repeat after me. Evid. Evid means a slave or a servant. And the verb avad means to serve. So this is what God says. I want my people to come out of Israel to be, to, to avad, to serve me, to be my servants. Not the servant, no longer the servants of Pharaoh, but now my servants in my covenant. Okay? Um, repeat after me the next word, ga'al. Ga'al ga means to redeem, and we don't know the participial form yet, but the participial form, go'el, means a redeemer. Um, and so, um, Boaz in the Book of Ruth is a kinsman redeemer. It's a it's a it's a social role in Israel to be a redeemer, to be a near family member who looks out for the to the best interests of the family. Um, after me, Chazak. This is not. Uh, uh, notice that this is the verb, not the adjective. It's not strong. It's the verb to be strong. Chazak. Okay, don't don't confuse it with the adjective. Repeat after me. Nafal. Nafal. Nafal means fall. <laughs> There's probably a way you can uh, connect that in your mind to to fall. And then oh, here's the verb. Avad. Avad to serve. The verb to serve and the noun servant, Evid. Okay, let's see. 
You ready? Uh, page 77, vocabulary list. Let's see if we can, we only have a couple minutes here. Repeat after me. Boker. Boker. It means morning, I say. Boker tov to you. It means good morning. Uh, chodesh. Chodesh. New moon or month. Lila. Accents on the first syllable. See, he's telling you accents on the first syllable means night. So that word, Lila, that name Lila, means night. Uh, we have to meet Erev. Erev means evening. Erev Tov, good evening to you. Okay, next word, eight. 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 Time. What was it? Was it the, in Peter Pan, is it a crocodile? The eight the clock? <laughs> Didn't they eat a clock that was ticking? Isn't that, isn't that right? So, and then they always knew that it was could be nearby if they because it ate the time. Okay. <laughs> next, next column, bara, bara. to create. Bereshit bara Elohim. In the beginning, God created. That's the word from the first verse. Bara to create. If you have to me, chata, chata. to sin. Repeat after me, matzah. matzah. Oh, look what I found. Some matzah under the table. Repeat <laughs> uh, after me, nasa. nasa. To lift or carry. I like to say, NASA, we have liftoff. <laughs> nasa. Kara. Repeat after me, kara. Kara. This means, this is to read, but it also means to call out. There's no word for silent reading in Hebrew. <laughs> reading is kara, to read out loud. You know that silent reading is a, is a more recent, uh, you know, practice that we do. But they, in the ancient world, they always, to read is always communal. It's to read out loud for others to hear. Tyler? Is there a reason the uh, vowels are irregular? Uh-huh. What we're going to learn in this next chapter is that see how they all end with olive every single one so it's that olive that's affecting the pot what we would assume was a patah to become a comments so again he always introduces things in vocabulary before the chapter when you discuss it so there's this vowel class that we're going to see where it ends with an olive and that affects the vowel pattern it's a good observation oh, well, i was trying to figure yeah. out how i'm going to remember that it's a verb without the patah but i guess the olive is yeah, you could think of it as it's normally would be a patah, but it's because of the all of it's lengthening to the comments. Okay, so let me know if there is Borsma class on Wednesday. Otherwise, we'll plan on having a review session. I hope as many of you as can do it will will come. And if you're getting out of isolation, I hope you can join us too, and we'll we'll stream it. If let me know if you want to stream Wednesday. Okay, bye. Have, have a good next class. A syllabus says it's Tuesday, Friday. Oh, is it? We should be available on Wednesday. Okay. I do. The Borisman syllabus. The Borisman syllabus. I do not have a Monday. 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 Monday.